I think the meeting ground, the bridge for both of us and all of us is a sense of purpose. You know, I used to think that the ultimate goal, the reason we're doing everything, whether it's 10% or 6% body fat, whatever it is, we think we're going to be happier because the end of every rainbow is happiness, a uh, better relationship, better this. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I, I've reminded folks that um, the best thing about going to college or university is we find out it doesn't make us happy. <laughs> there are people who don't go to college or don't go to university. And for years, they look back, if only I'd gone to university and graduated, that's I'd be that's, happy. Dude, that's, if, that's so me. <laughs> all right. How about this? If only I had an even better relationship, I'd be happy. If only I had children, I'd be happy. If only I hadn't had children, I'd be happy. <laughs> if, if only I traveled more, if only I made more money, if only, if only, if only, if only when I retire, if only I had more respect, you know, and until we realize there's no such thing as future happiness. We're either happy now or we're not because the future never comes. It's not about future anything. It's right now. And by the way, happiness is not just some giddy feeling that descends upon us. We've all experienced that, but it never lasts. Happiness, I view in terms of this peaceful warrior's approach to living, I view happiness as a practice. And somebody might say, well, that sounds good, but what do you mean practicing happiness, Dan? Well, I ask people, how do you behave when you're feeling happy? We all know what that, we've all felt happy. Are you more present? Yeah. Are you more enthusiastic when you're feeling happy? Yeah. Uh, are you kinder when you're feeling happy than when you're unhappy? Yes. Good. Do all those things. That's the practice of happiness. You see, one of the most controversial things that I teach, and I'm not just like, uh, how do I put it? In a way, I'm just another teacher. You speak with a lot of authors and teachers and so on. But what makes it a bit different? And if you uh, come to that part in my new memoir on the sage, he brought me back to earth and reminded me of a couple of things, which is why I do not encourage people to feel happy or kind or loving or peaceful, or confident, or courageous. I only encourage people to behave in those ways. Because I've learned, after a lot of study and deep contemplation and observation, that we have less control over what emotions are passing through us in any given moment uh, than we have over what we actually do. We have less control over what thoughts appear in our mind, or appear in our awareness, just pop up. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative thoughts. But we have less control over that than we, what we actually do, how we behave, moving our arms and legs and our mouth. So my focus in this approach to living is doing what we need to do. You know, a man named Shoma Morita, a psychiatrist, a Japanese psychiatrist, once put it this way. He said, when running up a hill, it's okay to give up, to quit as many times as you want, as long as your feet keep moving got to hear the full conversation I had with Dan Millman. We talk about finding your purpose. We talk about being able to become a happier person in the moment today while still achieving those big dreams and big goals. Click on the link right over there to hear the full conversation.